So we drew a carbohydrate, um, and now what we're going to do is look at how the when the carbohydrates come together, uh, or sugars come together, we're going to make these complex carbohydrates. So complex carbohydrates are going to be simply polymers of repeating sugar units. Uh, and in this particular case, what we're going to look at are three different polymers um, that are very common. Uh, and they're all made up with the same monomer unit, which is glucose. So this, this here is the structure for glucose. And this is how we'll, we'll often see it um, in this linear form. Um, glucose's carbons can be numbered. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now one of the differences between glucose and other six carbon sugars are going to be, again, location of the carbon oxygen double bond and location of the hydroxyl groups, sort of where they are, whether they're, they're up or down. Okay. Now, when we draw these chains, we typically don't draw it in this, what we would call a linear form. Typically, we'll see it in this ring form. And when we draw the ring form, there really are two types. All right, there is an alpha glucose, which is this, uh, and there's a beta glucose. I'll show you what the, what the real difference is. So alpha glucose is really focusing in on um, that the carbon number one OH group is down versus the beta OH group, that's the beta, is up. Otherwise, it's, it's the same, okay? So what we're going to be um, looking at in these molecules here are alpha glucose. So we're not going to use the beta one. Uh, we're just going to have the alpha glucose here. Um, okay, It's down like that. Now, if I haven't put in a, a hydrogen, it's just to kind of save space because it is it starts to get difficult to see everything that we're looking at when we start to draw every single um, hydrogen with the structure. So count, you know, one, two, three, four here. All the bonds are there. One, two, three. That means there should be another one here. There should be a hydrogen. So if there's anything missing, uh, it should be a hydrogen in this particular case. So what happens here is there's a fold. Right? So this linear glucose folds, right? and this is the carbon one, two, three, four, five, and the carbon number six is actually put up out of the ring. Right? So carbon one and five come together, and then the oxygens between them form a bond, and then we get the, oh, each, or the um, carbon oxygen double bond flipping around and forming an OH group that kind of sticks off uh, down the end here. And that's the characteristic structure. I'm not, you should be able to draw this in my class. Uh, this one I'd like you to be able to, to recognize, but we're not gonna get into drawing all the rings. Same with these over here, we're gonna get to now, be able to recognize them. So I'm gonna point out the characteristics and the names, uh, but we're not gonna be drawing those uh, in my class. Maybe you have another uh, class that's a little more advanced and you might uh, be asked to draw them. So what do we have here? These are all gonna be glucose molecules that are repeating. Uh, and so they're gonna be joined together. So one ring to another ring to another ring. Now they're gonna have glycosidic linkages. So these are gonna be the bonds between the two rings. The bonds, those are the glycosidic. And in this particular case, when we talk about sugars, uh, we refer to the glycosidic links as being between uh, particular carbons based on their number, right? And these particular links here, uh, we call one, four linkages. That's because they're gonna be between the number one carbon and the number four carbon. See, one, two, three, four. So it's a bond between the one and the four carbon. Over here, this will be the fourth carbon. One, two, three, four. So one and four, one and four, and so on. And that's gonna be the same, same for all these. So these are all gonna have these one, four linkages in these particular chains. The one we see up top here is the structure of starch. And we can digest starch, right? We can break it down. So our body has enzymes, uh, an amylase enzyme that can bind to these molecules and break down and get glucose, which we need in our cells, from the starch molecules. And that's all you really need to know to kind of recognize that and look at that structure. 
Now here we have cellulose. So cellulose is what makes you know, paper. It's, it's largely made up of cellulose. Now, cellulose, you can see, well, it looks very similar, doesn't it? And these are actually glucose molecules as well. Glucose to glucose to glucose. And they are the 1,4 um, linkages as well. But what you're going to see is cellulose is made up of the beta glucose. And so that switch, that flip, all right, of the um, of the hydroxyl group, then gets some of these flipped around the other way, uh, and where you can see these groups here up top here, the sixth uh, carbon up on top. Sometimes you see it down here on the bottom. So the sixth one's up on top, carbon number six. And now carbon number six is down here. So they're going up and down. So it's that sort of structure. Now that little difference makes it so that we can't digest cellulose. The same enzyme that binds to the starches and pulls the, glu the glucose apart can't do that with cellulose. So, so the key point I want to make here is that small changes to the chemical structure have a big impact to our cells. Finally, this third one I want, we want to look at here is glycogen. Okay, so glycogen is important because this is our um, sugar or carbohydrate storage molecule. All right, so plants make these, plants make starch and cellulose, and we can use starch from plants for energy. We can't use the cellulose, so you this, all glucose. Glucose here, glucose here, glucose here. But how the chemical bonds are set up are then going to affect you know, what sorts of organisms make them, their job, how other organisms can use them. Uh, so the chemistry becomes very important for the biology aspect of it. Here we have glycogen. So glycogen here, we're also going to see the 1,4 linkages, right? Um, one with four, so that's going to be the same. And this is also the uh, alpha glucose, just like we saw up here. So starch has the alpha glucose. But uh, a difference that we're going to see now is, what's this? You know, here is now another glucose that's coming off uh, with a branch. So glycogen has what we call branching chains. And when the chains branch, that's with the number six carbon to this one here. So these are actually going to be one six linkages that create the branch. Once we have a branch, it's going to be yet another chain, just like this one um, of the one four sugar. So it's going to be glucose to glucose to glucose to glucose with one four linkages, just like we see up here in the starch. So in a way, it's kind of like a molecule almost exactly like the starch molecule, but the starch molecule is just one straight linear molecule. Here we have that same type of molecule, but then we have additional branches of that molecule sticking off it. Right? And that's what we make in our cells called glycogen, which is our complex carbohydrate storage of glucose. When you have excess blood glucose, your body can then store some of that glucose as glycogen for your muscles and for your cells that later on when your blood glucose level would drop, you would tap into those reserves to resupply it. So um, just be able to recognize the, the glucose molecule um, and its ring form, and then be able to recognize which one of these would be starch, which one would be cellulose, and which one would be glycogen. And then simply be able to number, just add a number you know, on here, just counting one, two, three, four, five, six to the carbons, knowing that these have the one, four bonds between the sugars, uh, except when you have a chain, you have the one six linkage. Right? And uh, so don't worry, so you should worry about labeling them, not necessarily sketching them, but it would be a good idea to do your own little sketches because it'll make it a lot easier in the future if you can.